Hello and welcome to today's webinar, Laser Plastic Welding 101, the latest evolution in joining technology. My name is Josh Brown. I'm with LPKF Laser and Electronics and I'll be your host today. Now today's webinar is intended to be just a brief overview of laser plastic welding. So if at the end of this short presentation you feel like you would like more information, then I'll give you instructions on how you can get a copy of LPKF's Laser Plastic Welding Design Guidelines document. This is a technical resource for designers and engineers who are in the concept phase of a project and they're looking to determine if laser plastic welding is a viable solution for their application. So let's go over the three main topics that we're going to cover in today's presentation. First off we have what is laser plastic welding and in this topic we're going to cover the basic process of laser plastic welding as well as a few of the fundamental concepts. Secondly we're going to be talking about applications that currently use laser plastic welding as well as the industries that you'll find those applications in. And then finally, we're going to talk about how laser plastic welding can be a solution to common problems that you may face with other plastic joining methods. And throughout this presentation, we're going to refer to those as just advantages. Now, I left topics number two and number three up on the screen together because we're going to be covering them simultaneously. As we go through the advantages, I will list applications that correspond to each one of those. Okay, so let's move into topic number one, which was what is laser plastic welding? And first off, we're going to cover the basic process. Now, the process involves four main factors. Uh, we like to call these the big four, and you can see them listed below. Now, before I jump into these, I want to give you a quick definition of how laser plastic welding works. So the process of laser plastic welding involves passing laser radiation through an upper transmissive layer down to the surface of a lower absorbing layer. Now at the surface, where the energy is absorbed, heat is created and this heat allows the plastic to become molten and that molten plastic creates a weld. So let's talk about how each of these four factors play into the process of laser plastic welding. So first up we have our transmissive upper layer. Now the main characteristic of this piece of plastic is that it needs to have the ability to transmit laser radiation. Now when we say transmissive or transparent, keep in mind that we're talking about transparent to laser radiation and not optically transparent. Now this is because laser radiation for the purposes of laser plastic welding falls into the infrared spectrum which is outside of our visual sight range. Now a perfect example to compare the difference between optically transparent and laser transparent is the cover of this gear sensor. Now notice the top is completely opaque black but that's how we see it. Now recall this piece of plastic only needs to be transparent to the laser radiation not transparent to how we see it. So this is achieved by adding very dark red and green dyes and that gives it an opaque look and it allows it to retain its laser transmissive properties. So factor number two is the absorbing lower layer. Now the main characteristic of this piece of plastic is that it needs to have the ability to absorb the same laser radiation the upper layer transmitted. Now this absorption will create heat and that heat is what allows the plastic to become molten and create a weld. Now most thermoplastics are naturally transparent to the laser radiation, so in order to achieve absorptive properties, additives have to be used. Now typically these are pigmentations. Um, in the case of the gear sensor you saw here, carbon black was used. This is most common because it's the best absorber, and it's also a very cheap way to achieve a black looking color. Other colors can be used, uh, it doesn't have to be black, um, but like I said, black is the best absorber and it's already a very common used pigmentation in the injection molding process. So you can see by this example again that the top layer, although it's black and the bottom layer is the same color to the way we see it, the laser energy reads that top layer as completely transparent where the bottom layer will absorb the laser energy. So you can achieve different properties of how the laser is going to react to those pieces of plastic based on the types of additives that are used. Now if you have a application that requires uh, special color coordination, such as uh, applications you'll find in the medical industry quite often, where you need clear to clear welds, this is possible using special additives that will give the lower layer absorptive properties while allowing it to retain its optical translucency. So that brings us to factor number three, which is contact between the two joining partners. Now it does sound relatively obvious that if you're welding two pieces of plastic together that they would need to be in contact, but there is a less conspicuous reason that we bring this up. Now recall that the laser radiation is absorbed by the lower layer, and this absorption creates heat. Now it's this heat that allows the plastic to become molten and create a weld. 
The problem you run into is that it's only being absorbed by the lower layer. So in order to get the upper layer to heat and become molten to create a weld, you have to transfer that energy from the lower layer to the upper layer. Now this is done through conduction and contact is going to ensure that. Now typically contact is achieved by building the parts to fit well together naturally. However, to ensure perfect contact, pneumatic clamp tooling will be used throughout the process. The final factor is material compatibility. The two pieces of plastic to be joined need to have similar resin properties as well as similar melting temperatures. If the melt temperatures of the plastics vary too greatly, then one piece of plastic may react very well to the laser radiation while the other piece is left completely unaffected or actually burning. Now the chart you see to the right is a listing of a few of the plastics that are weldable to each other. Now you notice that the diagonal line that indicates that each plastic is weldable to itself and then the pluses outside of that give you some additional material combinations. Now this is just a very simple chart. If you would like to see a more detailed chart with weld quality as well and uh, more plastics, then you can find a copy of that in the back of our design guidelines document, which again, I will give you instructions on how to get a hold of at the end of the presentation. So that wraps up topic number one. Let's move into topics number two and number three. Recall those were how laser plastic welding will address common problems with other plastic joining methods. And to just dumb that down, we're going to refer to those as advantages of laser plastic welding. Also, keep a lookout for the applications that will apply to each of those advantages. Now, here's a quick list of the most common plastic joining methods. We're not going to go into these in detail today. I assume that if you're watching this presentation, you're familiar with these or at least have heard of them by name. We'll just be focusing on laser plastic welding today. Now, just because laser plastic welding is a very flexible uh, process and it can work with a lot of applications and it does have a lot of advantages, that doesn't necessarily suit it to be the best process for your particular application. The way we like to say it is laser plastic welding kind of picks up where the other methods leave off. If you have a very complex application that requires uh, solutions that you haven't been able to find with other plastic joining methods, then laser plastic welding may be a great option for you. All right, so let's move on to topics number two and number three. Now this is the first of nine slides you'll see in regards to the advantages that we're going to cover. You can see each of those nine advantages listed on the left. And then notice on the right, you'll see pictures of each of the applications. Also, as these boxes slide up from the bottom, these are going to tell you which of the three major industries that this particular application will fall into. Uh, just a quick note, consumer electronics, medical devices, and automotive, those are the three main industries that you'll find laser plastic welding in today. Um, the major focus is really on medical devices and automotive, but consumer electronics is gaining some ground. So that being said, let's move into our first advantage, which is lower joining costs. Now, laser plastic welding has the ability to uh, lower joining costs compared to other plastic methods for a few factors. Uh, first off, and probably the most notable, is that there's no consumables involved in the laser plastic welding process. There's no uh, screws, rivets, adhesives, or tapes. When dealing with mass production, any time that you can remove consumables from the equation, you're talking about dropping per part costs dramatically. The second factor is minimal system maintenance. Now, laser plastic welding systems are very robust. They're designed to run 24-7 with very minimal downtime. I believe the only scheduled maintenance is the swap of a water filter on the cooling system for the laser. And factor number three is fewer failed parts. Now, this is due to laser plastic welding's excellent process monitoring and quality controls. And I'm not going to go into those right now because I'm actually going to cover those towards the end of the presentation. So let's move on to advantage number two, which is minimal part stress. Now, laser plastic welding's main advantage when it comes to reducing part stress is its ability to create localized heat. Now, in engineering terms, you may have heard this referred to as an HAZ, or a heat-affected zone. In laser plastic welding, it's going to produce a very small heat-affected zone. So to contrast the difference between laser plastic welding and other joining methods, take the picture on the right. If those two pieces of plastic were to be friction welded, essentially they would be rubbed together to create heat, and heat would be created anywhere that those two pieces are in contact with each other. Now the problem lies in the fact that there's a lot of surface contact between those two pieces. What can happen is if too much heat's created, you can damage the plastics, or if there's sensitive components inside the plastics, those can be damaged as well. Now with laser plastic welding, 
all of the heat is localized to only where the laser strikes the plastic. So let me zoom in on the picture. Now as you can see, this dark area here is the laser travel path. That's the only area that's going to be affected by the heat in laser plastic welding. So excess heat won't be created anywhere outside of that laser travel path. Now this is a huge advantage when you're dealing with sensitive applications, and for a couple of reasons. First of all, by reducing part stress, you're going to reduce the amount of failed parts you create, and you're going to save money. And then secondly, by minimizing part stress, laser plastic welding is really opening doors for new and smaller applications. So let's move on to our third advantage, which is joint strength. Now, laser plastic welding has the ability to create very strong joins. In reference to other plastic joining methods, I believe only hot plate welding can produce a stronger joint. Now, the application you see here is the housing for an electronic sensor that you would find in a car. So again, we're in the automotive industry. Now, as the automotive industry moves towards placing more and more electronics within their vehicles, the demand for robust electronics is becoming more and more prevalent. Now, as we talked about, on the last slide, electronic devices tend to be sensitive. However, in the automotive industry, durability and wear are huge factors with any part that goes into a car. So having the ability to produce strong joints, even in the most sensitive applications, is becoming not only an advantage, but a requirement in the automotive industry. The purpose of this slide is to prove that laser plastic welding can produce very strong joints. So in order to do this, we're going to use what's called a pull or a burst test. In this particular instance, a pull test was used. And what we're trying to determine by this test is whether or not the weld is weaker than, as strong as, or stronger than the parent material. Now in laser plastic welding, you'll find that most of the time, the weld will actually be stronger than the parent material. However, uh, let's zoom in and find out for ourselves. Now, this application, uh, you can see that this white part is a lid, and this originally sat on top of this housing, and the joint would be all along the edges. Now what we're looking for here is material transfer. So you can see black transfer here and some in the corner. And then on the housing you can see white transfer here, here, and then all along this edge. Now what that tells us is that as these two pieces were broken apart, that the breakage occurred not in the weld but in the parent material and some of that material was left uh, on each of the two pieces of plastic. So in this case laser plastic welding did indeed live up to its name and create a very strong weld.